G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and it's getting close to dark so it's time for these Australian native stingless bees to get into their hives and go to bed for the night. They've had a big day foraging in the forest and up in my vegetable garden pollinating all my crops so it's time for them to have a good rest and then they can get up early tomorrow morning and buzz away. This video is about how we can split one native stingless bee hive into two. With the decline of the honeybee worldwide, it's probably more important than ever that we know how to make more native beehives. So I hope you enjoy this video. Let's get into it. There's some honey. Good clean honey. Honey only, no, uh, no pollen amongst it. Have a five-eighth inch hole for them to come through and the brood's underneath here, hopefully. Ready to split. Cabinaria. Yeah. It has a spiral pattern. Yep. And we're going to split this. Yeah. To make two hives. Well, hopefully. That's the hope. Because we won't know what until after a few months that we know that both hives are taken. That's right. right. You win some, you lose some. Yep. Do they generally keep all the honey in the top? Well, you know, when it's only a single story, yeah. they tend to put the honey in the corners, oh. in the four corners, and have the brood. They usually keep the brooder in the centre of the hive. Right. You see here where there's no honey, you see they've still got a space down there, that side. Yeah. And this one they've, this is uh, pollen, pollen sacks here. Yep. And the darker ones like down there is the honey. This is the sheath that the uh, uh, cabinaria put over. That one will be able to be split. And what are you looking for when you're going to split the health of the hive overall? Or how big it is? Oh yes, how strong it is. Yep. That one's got a nice big... They do vary a fair bit the, the, uh, the amount of brood they have. It's good to have in a cabinaria a brood about that big in volume. Yep. But they can be... If you've got a queen that's not as strong, it could be brood only that big. Yep. And I'll split down to about that big. Right. But if it gets down to about like that, I don't. Uh huh. See how black that one is? Yeah, it's it's darker. See the spiral effect? Now this is interesting here, Mark. See that there? Yeah, that um. In the brood cells. Like some type of larger egg or something. And here? See that there? Yep. What's that there? Wait a minute. Down below that. Hang on, I've just got to get that focused. Show that again. Yeah, that larger yeah. type thing. Well, I've got no idea what that is. They are queen cells. Oh, so they're, la they're, they're bigger ones. Yeah. And the way they make a queen is they make a larger cell. There's probably some more over there. They make a larger cell and they fill it up with food and lay the egg and that's the only difference. Oh. And uh, so, because in any of the cells, when the larva has finished eating all the food, it pulpates. Yep. Okay, so they want to make it clean, so they make it bigger and have put more food in it. Yeah. So that it turns into a. So the queen, queen develops more, so yeah. it, uh, it yeah. grows bigger. And why do you think this one's darker than the other ones are lighter? Is it? I have no corn? idea. See different all this? Food? That'd be hard stuff. Yeah. See how fairly hard that is? Yeah. That's resin and stuff like that from trees. Yeah. You know what I love about this? You don't, I mean, yes, you're wearing a, um, a face mask so you don't get bees in your face, but yeah. this is relatively safe to do. Yeah. 
a bit different to the European. Yeah. Thing. I've noticed well. all the, I notice a lot more bees in my vegetable garden yeah. after having these down here on the property. What I do now is to uh, tape up all the joins to lessen the chance of getting getting disease in amongst them or getting yep. enemies climbing in and I'll leave it on till I work them the next time. Yep. Even if it saves one in ten hives that might die. It's uh I missed that. What are these sticks? They look like measuring instruments or something. No, they're packing. Packers to pack it up and tilt it. Oh right. It tilted so it uh, for the splitting process. The honey can drain out. Oh, for the honey draining out. Oh. See, see the bottom of the boards. See the holes. Yep. Yep. So when you tilt it up, the honey can run away and run through the holes. Oh. I countersink them because that that means there's a greater chance of getting the honey to run down oh, there than if it's just a straight hole. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's something I didn't notice in the lid. That's the base. Oh, actually. the base, sorry. Yeah. I'm changing the tops a bit. I'm putting styrofoam in the tops now. Now, this is a new a new one. You've got a mesh on the front of this one. So you've changed the design a little bit. You've put a gauze, or is that... Yeah, yeah, gauze. Originally, I used galvanised fencing wire at the bottom yeah. that the acids in the in the beehive very quickly take all the galvanise off and they rust on oh. that stainless steel. Right. And uh, I'm putting three wires on the top now for them to build onto to reduce the amount of claps. You use a, lose a few hives in the hot weather when they collapse inside because they are very fragile. Yep. That one's not so fragile. Some of the others are more fragile. Yep. The black ones seem to be much stronger than the brown ones inside. Oh. Uh, yes, and this here, uh, that's okay. the a normal entrance hole that slopes upwards yep. to uh, help weatherproof it. And I put some midge gauze on it, which is smaller than mosquito gauze because the uh, native bees can put their heads through mosquito gauze oh. and they can't get their heads through this. They oh. can put their heads through mosquito gauze, but they can't pull it back. Oh, no, All right. And uh, there's not many get caught like that, but a few. And uh, I leave this on for a day, and when I come back tomorrow, I'll remove this, and they'll have their scent inside. Otherwise, they don't like to go inside because there's a, about a two and a oh. half inch channel inside that doesn't smell like home. So you're essentially going to trap them in overnight, so that they know that that's their home. Well, it'll be it'll be still with this, even though I'm cutting it in half. Yep. Uh, It'll be still together in one hive, oh, and then right. I'll separate it tomorrow. Oh, I see. Okay. So you're attaching this to it to start off with, so that they get their scent, and then you split it the next day. Yeah. The main reason for the main reason for uh, doing the operation in two days is that. There's a certain amount of collateral damage when you cut them in half because you cut clean through the brood. Yeah. And if you leave them all together, the two halves together, or one above the other one, then they can uh, then they can clean it all up and they've got all the bees en masse. And if there happens to be a virgin queen in amongst it and you don't kill the laying queen, the virgin queen will probably go to the other half that's away from the queen. Right. And then the next day when you actually separate them, uh, if you've got a uh, laying queen in one half and a virgin queen the other half, that virgin queen will probably be laying in a week or so. Right. So there's less downtime with the production of brood. Yep. Now when I wired these up, I call that wiring them. Yep. When I wired these up, I considered that two, two to hold the top with. Plentiful, now the sun's just come out. So obviously sun's an issue when you're splitting the hive. The story is that direct sunlight on brood will kill the brood. Oh, right. 
Whether it does or not, I don't know. Here we've got a stand here with an umbrella so we can work outdoors or wherever we want to go and put this umbrella up so it protects it from direct sunlight which can kill the brood. As I'm splitting them and inspecting them this time around, I'm putting uh, a third wire in most of them. One of the varieties I'm not. And that's a starless. But they'll probably end up with uh, wires on the top of their boxes too. Mm -hmm. As you can see when you look in here, uh, surprisingly enough the bees are just as happy to build their, their uh, nest onto stainless steel as they are onto the wood. Mm. They don't mind and that does surprise me but uh, as you can see there they, they're happy to use the stainless steel. Yeah. I don't drill the holes right through and, uh, and I poke them in both ends. And what's this extra wire doing? That's to support the hive yep. so that now even if you're not splitting the hive I have had hives in the past that when I've lifted the cover off to inspect them because they build onto the because they build their nest onto the underside of the uh, linoleum that I use mm -hmm. you break that support off that's, that's, uh, that they've used to uh, carry it on. This way I can lift it off and they've still got a lot of support on those wires yep. so that it doesn't collapse. If they collapse you quite often lose the hive. Yep. Now if you look in here you see that the brood extends from this part to that part. It's fairly well in the central with having a, the advantage of having a square box, you're more likely to get the brood in the centre. Yep. Uh, this is an unusual form of box because it's a, a vertical splitting box. Most of them are horizontal, where you'd have two boxes that might be that high. Would you prefer the vertical splitter? I mean, it looks good in this instance because it's right in the middle. Right? Well, I think so. The, one of the advantages is that the way they build their brood they start laying the brood, building the brood from the bottom up to the top and when it gets 50 days old it starts hatching out at the bottom and so that follows up and there's a space as it hatches out and then they go, the queen starts laying, they build more cells underneath so there's always a space in between the brood with the advancing, the advancing brood is the one that's hatching out mm -hmm. I'm not sure now Anyway, there's new brood one end and old brood the other end and it keeps changing all the time. And uh, so if you split them horizontally and you get it in the middle, then you've got 25 days on each of those hives where you're getting no new bees hatch out. Right. If you do a vertical split, you're getting bees hatching out most days. Right. And so you don't have that break because different age bees do different things in the box. They tell me that oh, the... Yeah, yeah. The young bees make most of the uh, wax and there's only 30% of the bees ever get outside in their lifetime, the rest die in the hive. It's only the old bees that go foraging. Now I do a cut, it's important to, to move the knife a lot so that, uh, oh there's that queen cell, I'll leave that queen cell on the other side.
have to break all that glue that they've got. Now you can see there's the advancing front. This is only new stuff. This is old. These are hatching out here. And eventually it'll work up to the top. And then they'll start at the bottom. And they only use the cells once. But that's a good shot of, uh, of how it is. That bee there that's a, a, a brown colour, he's only just hatched out, that's why he's brown, he'll go black with a bit of exposure to light. Right. Now that's the entrance there. Yep. So I put an empty box on this side, empty half rather. Yep. We've got bees swarming all over us and of course they're stingless. So unless you get one up your nose or something, uh, they're not going to hurt you. It's just like flies really, but they're not as annoying as flies. Because they'll land on you and sort of crawl around, but they won't sort of try to stick and suck on you. Now there is a difference in height here between those mm -hmm. halves. Yeah. Just slightly, about uh, five mil. So you're gonna. I'll put three spaces in there. It. Uh, if it keeps them even, there's less spaces for them to. Oh yeah, crawl out. Where well, the something. rubbish do get yeah, in. Yeah. And they do have several predators, don't they? Like wasps and that type of thing. Yeah, that's correct. That if they get in. I mean, really, they don't have much of a defence system except for hiding. And of course, they make valuable honey. It's important to use a good quality uh, duct tape. The poor quality uh, deteriorates fairly quickly in the ultraviolet. Yep. It's only good for a couple of months. Yep. You just made those spaces, did you? Out of lino or something? Yeah, that's right. Oh, good. Now, what's very important too when you have a, a box of this configuration, you see where it's cut through here, there's no honey there. Yep. So it's virtually what we'd call a dry split. If you cut it across like that, you see how you have the honey here. Yeah. And if it was completely full, which this one isn't, you get quite a lot of honey running down. Oh, right, yep. Now, I put that one on the opposite side oh. to make it drain better. Yeah. And there's the... There's the other side, yeah. and these match up. That matches that side. That side's not quite well, but it's... Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. And now we've got two hives on top of each other. With open access inside so they can clean up the, the damage that's done. Yep. And uh, tomorrow I'll separate them. Yeah, so they'll have a busy day ahead. Yes. Cleaning up the hive, fixing up the the cut through, picking up the damage in the hive.
However you separate them, there's always a significant amount of damage. But uh, this one they'll be able to clean up quite good because there's quite a, a goodly number of bees there too. Yeah, yeah, lots. And the fact that uh, they've got queen cells, closed queen cells, uh, is a good sign. Yes, it probably means that they, this time of the year, they're thinking of reproducing. Yep. Or replacing the queen. Yep. Like in, in nature, do they do this process themselves? Sometimes they get too big and decide to split. Or do they? Yes, just, they probably yeah. split once a year in. Right. In uh, if they're living in trees. Yep. Tighten these bands up together. They're hardly necessary, the bands, but uh, it does make the box a little bit more secure. Yep. That's number one for my record, so I know what the origin of it was. I'll fold that tape back against itself so I can pull it off tomorrow. Yep. Got a place to grip on. Yeah. By sealing up all those lower joins, it means that there's less less places for the flies to come and lay their eggs to to uh, blow the five. Yeah. Now even though that's a, 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 a dry split, I'll just put this in case there is a bit of honey around so it can drain out the back holes. Mm -hmm. The one under the back here, this is the open space in this part. That's full of brood and this one's full of brood. Yep. And you just don't want that honey to be sitting in the nest, obviously. What's that? You just wouldn't want that honey from that cut to bleed out and sit in the bottom of the no, nest. that's right. Yeah. So that's why yeah, it, it's, they've got the spaces to drain out through those holes and recesses we saw. A teaspoon of honey in the bottom of the box if it can't get out has the potential to smother a, uh, a normal sized hive. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that is, that is important now. And what's that do? That's the insulation. Oh, okay. So I'll bring that back tomorrow. Mm -hmm. The insulation just go underneath the hood there. Yeah, I'll put a. You just put an extra block 25 of wood. Twenty-five mil uh, piece of wood down first. Yep. And then the twenty-five mil insulation on the top of that. Right. But for today, you just put a couple of blocks of wood. Yes. Yeah, it'll do. Well, that'll have to do. Yeah. As I'm going through them this time, I'm making them all that way. Now I'll do this one. Well, that looks great. So that all up, that process of splitting that hive, I mean, you worked fast, but really only took about 10 minutes. I suppose, the yeah. actual splitting of it. Yeah, I mean, I know you did a bit of explaining, but... And uh, the separation tomorrow is less because it's only a matter of taping another, pulling them apart. Yeah, and undoing that tape yeah. you just had there. And then, yeah, and then opening up that gauze. Yeah, removing that. Yeah, and there you go.
Yeah. And on to the next one. Yeah, this style of hive is working well. What type of wood is this? A cypress. Yeah. I'm using cypress because cypress is uh, white ant resistant. Oh yeah. I'd rather use pine, pine uh, white pine or hoop pine is much uh, lighter yep. and has better insulation quality. Yep. But uh, the white ants love it. Yeah, yeah. They're similar, the uh, advancing front is in about the middle. Yeah. This is more like a Christmas tree. Yeah. For some reason. Sometimes they're more straight up and down. You can see down at the bottom where there's some empty cells they've made. They only make a few cells at a time, maybe six to ten, uh -huh. and then fill them up with food and lay the eggs in them. <laughs> wow. And if you're harvesting honey, you, you'd do this while you wouldn't split the hive? No. That one could be harvested there. I won't yeah. harvest it though. No. What I did, the only time I've had native bees for five years and only had one extraction from them, mm -hmm. apart from isolated a little bit. And that time I put a, an empty hive in between the, the, uh, the nest and I lifted the uh, honey super up and put an empty box in between yep. and went back a few days later and a lot of the bees had left. Right. You can't separate all the bees from the honey. Not like um, European no. bees, no. Because of the nature of the way they build their nest. Yeah, you do it yeah. what, about every 12 months? Yes, well you wouldn't, while you're splitting, they rarely make surplus honey. Yeah. So here's a spot of honey, shall I taste it? Yes, taste it. Go on, Mark. Mm. You know, you know what it reminds me of? Port. A really nice port. Sweet, yeah. So that's three. That's the three hive split. And so tomorrow, you come back and you. Uh, oh, that's the three hives. Yes, yeah, split, but still put together. We um, come back tomorrow and separate them. Yeah, we come back tomorrow and separate them, and then that'll be the procedure done. And hopefully, then we can monitor the hives and see if they take. All right, so it's the next day and we're back to split those hives. The separation, we split them yesterday, today we separate them. Oh, that's right, we separate them. Make two out of them. Yep. Probably too dark in there for you to see, but see how they've repaired all that? Oh, yeah. And see wow. here? Oh, boy, they've been at work, haven't see they? See the extra wire that's been put in? You yep. see how they've yep. fixed it on to stop the hive collapsing? Yeah, oh, gee, aren't they good? They did all that overnight. Yep. Essentially, one hive now becomes two. That goes there. Oh, some styrofoam insulation on top with a hardwood separator by the looks of it or something. You've got a base, you've got this base which has got countersunk holes at the bottom and you've got the, the main box and then you've got a spacer there, foam insulation and then a tin lid on top for obviously weatherproofing and all that.
Opening it up. Now it's time to remove the closed opening and get rid of that gauze. Because the scent should be in there now and they should be able to go in and out of their new home. Now what I'll do, I'll shift that one over there and I'll put this new entrance up here. So that's where the workers will be interested used to going in and out yep and uh, they've got a lot of work to do yet inside to uh, to make the tunnel I make a tunnel inside so here they are working already on the new wires and attaching yeah to expand that brood wow. And they would have made a queen or already had one in there. Yeah, Whichever it's hard the case. To say. They'll yeah. have to sort that out themselves. Whichever the case, yeah. There's a new clean entrance for the new hive. As opposed to the old one where you can see there's a lot of I guess honey or nectar stuck around the outside of it as they keep coming in and out of the little highway from the flowers and into the hive so is any honey drained out? I'll have a look, I'll shift that there see that's quite dry, there's no honey because they were fairly dry split yeah, today yeah. Yeah, it, it seems like a really good way, this hive design is a really good way to uh, to do it, isn't it? Because you, like you are saying yesterday, it's minimal damage to the food and the honey source. It seems to work out fairly well. If, the, uh, if they're over full, if the boxes are over full, you can have some uh, damage to the honey pots. Yeah. But uh, these were just right for the splitting. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's how you split a native Australian beehive. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and hit that like button if you liked it. Plus, if you've got any questions, whack them down below. Be happy to try to answer them for you. If I don't know the answer, I'll get my uncle who's a somewhat of an expert in this area and set all this up. To answer any of those questions we also have a forum selfsufficientculture.com join up to that and let's talk about bees there thanks a lot for watching bye for now